Good morning. I am Mark, and I'm speaking this morning with Faye Reynolds, who is the Director, Director of Ministry at uh, Canadian Baptists of Western Canada. Uh, at First B, we're, we are a Canadian Baptist of Western Canada church, uh, and so this is the group of people that we associate with uh, from Manitoba through the BC and also up into the territories as well. And so, Faye, I know Director of Ministry, it sounds very specific, but also very vague at the same time. Uh, what kind of things do you oversee as Director of Ministry for the Canadian Baptists of Western Canada? Um, I started out wor primarily working with women's ministries, and that was my main um, position when I started. And then the job has expanded. So I oversee um, looking after the refugees. I do the applications for our churches who want to sponsor refugees into Canada. I look after, kind of oversee the camps, um, work with the camp directors and help to just help them to communicate with one another. <clears throat> so I keep a pulse on that. I help with the ordination process of our, of our pastors. And so I do the um, orientation and the training that they go through each year for the ordination and uh, help with the new pastor's orientation as well. And then I'm on the committee of CHAT, which is the Center for Healthy Aging Transitions. So um, I'm kind of an advisory person in that role and other sundry duties, I guess. Um, All right. That's, I'm all, I guess every time I hear you describe your job, it always sounds like there's something that I've missed from before. So I really appreciate all the different ways that you uh, help with and work with our churches uh, in this capacity. Uh, now, I'm, I'm sure there's been a lot of changes for the Canadian Baptist of Western Canada in the last several months uh, with the current pandemic going on. Uh, I know every person experiences this pandemic very differently, and probably every congregation and ministry does as well. Um, what, what challenges are you seeing or experiencing that some of our other churches and ministries are going through that we might not be considering at this time? Well, I guess some of the obvious things first are just how difficult it is um, for people who are not techno technologically savvy to connect to what their churches are doing. So there's a lot of people that um, are missing out um, from their church communities. But I also think that churches are learning to reach out in different ways besides technology and the kinds of, yeah, just phoning and connecting and, and trying to make sure that people still have community uh, in spite of their not having their actual church community to attend. So um, technology is wonderful, but we know that also has its limitations. Mm -hmm. but, but it also has had some, you know, some advances too. Uh, connecting to people that maybe wouldn't necessarily be connecting with the church. I'll talk about more of that maybe at the second half of the conversation. Um, one of the challenges right now for most of our churches is this feeling of no end in sight and what this new picture is gonna look like. Um, British Columbia has said there won't be any gatherings larger than 50 until spring of 2021. And so, that's a long time away for churches yeah. to figure out. And so one thing that we're noticing is a lot of um, pastors are starting to feel burned out, are starting to um, wrestle with their own emotional health mm. and um, just struggling with how, how they're going to continue to minister under these strange new ways. So we, are, um, we have sensed a lot of more um, stress on our pastors. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that would definitely be the case. Um, it, what what things right now are, are surprisingly positive? That, I mean, you, you've alluded to some things in terms of some technological advances uh, for some churches uh, and for, for people involved with ministry. What are some other things that are, that are surprisingly positive uh, at this time that we might not even be considering? Well, I wanted to capitalize on the, the one aspect of technology of putting the services online. So um, one of our churches, um, I don't think they'll mind me mentioning Brownfield. They, um, in a small rural area, you know, the whole town I think is the population of 300. Um, the church has always been well supported by the community, but there's a lot of people that have never come to church. And so the pastor has noticed people that have never come to church saying, I've really enjoyed your services online. Yeah. I, 
I think one of the things we haven't realized is how intimidating the church building itself is for people to risk entering a church. And now they can sort of anonymously check in with things online and start to realize that maybe there is some good things there. There's some things that can feed their souls and nourish them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's some barriers, I think, that are being broken down, which is really, really neat. Yeah, that's, that is really impressive. I know, I mean, one of the things that I'm struck by, I mean, sometimes you feel like you're just duplicating what's out there. There's so much content online now. And you would think that, well, if we produce something, no one's going to pay attention to it. And we found that's quite been quite the opposite, right? Like, I mean, you can go to the very highly produced and very polished worship videos that are online, but people within our congregation seem to prefer what our people are doing. Like they like to see um, people that are kind of like them, that are ones that are familiar to them. And that, that's, that's been quite remarkable about how that's been, how that's been drawn in. Um, so has there any, been any other uh, factors that, that seem to be um, positive things from this that are, that are surprising? I mean, there certainly is the challenges. I don't want to gloss over the fact that the challenges are there and they're very difficult. But uh, what, what other things have been, been surprisingly positive in this? Well, I'll just mention one other with um, the Iranian church that their services going online, they've had more and more conversions and they've already had, like they had 300 baptisms last year and they, they've just had so, so much um, the Holy Spirit has just been bringing people to Christ through them. Mm -hmm. And now being an online presence where their, their services can be even reached abroad, the, that um, that's expanding exponentially, the number of people mm -hmm. coming to Christ. So, so that's been really thrilling. Um, a matter of prayer is the pastor, um, his health hasn't been well. He has a bit of a lung condition. And, and also, um, how do we disciple all these people coming to Christ? So... Um, a wonderful challenge within this miracle that God is doing. So that's been really cool. Um, I think other, other things have just been the, the, um, the smaller ways that, that people connect that make a difference and, or, or using alternative methods. Um, one of our pastors has been doing podcasts that she's never done before an opportunity to be teaching uh, a little more than, than, what a normal sermon would be and and getting some engagement with that is, has been really uh, a good for their community mm. um i know a couple of our churches have tried some drive-in i think yeah drive-in churches um for one of them for easter and people came in their cars and were able to connect and, mm. yeah. so i hope we can get back together i hope we can find ways to be in the same place somehow um, because we just, we still need that contact, right? Mm. And I think that's why we like, even if it's not the greatest production, we like to see our friends and our family and cheer on people we know. Yeah, I think everyone's really looking for something that's real and genuine and, and they, they see it in things that are more familiar and relatable. So I think that's been really neat. And I, it's also been neat to see how people do it in their own context too. Like everyone, there's no one size fits all for this. I mean, we already knew that beforehand, but it, it's, I don't know if it highlights it even more, but it, it certainly seems to. So um, yeah, and it, it is interesting. I mean, when we read in Acts, we read about the crisis that came to the early church in terms of persecution in Jerusalem and the church had to scatter. And what was a bad thing actually ended up being something really positive in spreading the message of Christ throughout the world. And it seems like in some situations, we're certainly having that here as well, where we're scattered in a different way. Um, but that has caused us to reach out in ways that we would have never considered or tried before this too. And so there is, I mean, there certainly is difficult things and, uh, and there's, it's, it's different for everyone, but there certainly has been really surprising ways where we've seen God at work too. So yeah. And I think there's new models of, you know, we get into a, a rut of how we do church and we're, we're just going to be forced to change that. And I, you know, I love music. That's been, you know, the heart of how I worship and to consider church without singing is just beyond my brain. Mm -hmm. And yet I also have a contemplative side and I'm looking forward to some of that being offered mm -hmm. in worship. And yeah. so there's going to be some changes that, 
that are kind of forced, but I, I think it will get us out of some ruts. That will be a positive thing. Yeah, and there, there seems to be changes too, where we're not going back. Like even if everything went back the same as it was before, we cannot do ministry the same way we did before, right? In terms of those online connections that people are making, they may still continue to want those online connections. And so we can't all of a sudden be introduced into their lives and then abandon them where they are and say, well, no, you've got to come in the church building, right? There's, there's all these different things that have begun that we certainly have to consider as we go forward uh, in whatever the future looks like. So it's, it's been, yeah, it's been things that we know that we just can't let go coming from this as well. So it's, it's a really interesting time for sure. And I think another value is, is recognizing whether you're a small church or a large church, um, there's just so many different advantages depending where you are. And so some of the smaller churches have been able to do more Zoom church where they're, they are actually interactive and, and continuing to be connective. Maybe the large churches can do the big on, online productions that have a different offering as well. But I, I think it just highlights again, it's not the size, but it's, the, um, it's just what God is calling you to do and being faithful in that hmm. situation. Yeah, I think when we get back to uh, regular services, some of those Zoom churches, um, the pastor is going to be surprised when he gets up to the pulpit or she gets up to the pulpit and has people speaking back to them during the service um, <laughs> where they weren't doing that so much before. So there, there, there will be some very interesting developments that happen to us in, in the life of community as we get back together again. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, Faye, for your time uh, today. And we're really uh, grateful for all the ministry that you do with Canadian Baptists of Western Canada, how that affects our church at First Baptist specifically, but also uh, connects us to churches throughout Western Canada and makes very significant connections for us around the world. So we're, we're very grateful for uh, your time today and grateful for all that you do to serve us. Thank you, Mark. All right.